Alrighty, I think most people are here, Lauren, so we can probably um, go ahead and answer some of these questions that we've had sent through. So I've just put everyone's questions down on a piece of paper um, and I'll just read out the questions and any questions that relate uh, to more towards info care in our platform, then um, I'll happily answer those. And then any questions that um, are, are preferred for Lauren, um, she'll be able to jump in and give us easy pays um, answers, which will be really exciting. So one of the first questions that I've got is, um, I've built up a relationship with all of my parents. Um, how will this be effective if I move to direct debit? Really great question. Um, the answer simply here is it definitely can be um, improved and it definitely would not harm any relationship. The reason behind this is that with direct debit um, and the InfoCare platform, you're able to see greater visibility over when fees are paid. Um, if fees are not paid, it gives you a reason as to why. So um, you can see easily if it's to do with uh, insufficient funds or if it's incorrect details. So if there's a payment missed, you can you can have that conversation with your families to say, hey, we've noticed that Jimmy's payment actually didn't come through and we've had a look and we can see that it's because of the incorrect details. Are we able to grab those new card or bank details from you? Um, and the ability to do that right there in InfoCare or email that bill payer to enter their details when they get home. Um, so it really enhances those relationships and it definitely does not damage them. So that was a really great question. Um, Lauren, if you've got anything to add, obviously, um, please don't hesitate. Um, <laughs> the next question we've got is, um, once I create invoices in InfoCare, is there anything else I need to do? So another really great question. Um, obviously, if you are with the direct debit platform, no, it's simply just once you create your invoice behind the scenes, we set up um, with you the agreed run day, which is when that information goes through to EasyPay. Um, so it's simply just you creating those invoices and committing them. Um, obviously, if you're not yet signed up, then you will have to send these as per usual via um, statements or sending the invoices directly. Uh, the next question we've got is how are the fees deducted? So Lauren, I think this would be a really great question for you. Awesome. So everything that you have done into InfoCare, loading your invoices, everything like that, what we then do on a daily basis, InfoCare talks to EasyPay and says, please direct debit all of these parents that have been set up. So we look at that schedule and we run all of those payments. So they might be bank payments, credit card payments, and then we process them. Processing takes three days, um, mainly due to our banks. Credit card processing is immediate. So as soon as you put it through within the day, you will know if it's passed or not, and bank can take up to three days. It's just our system here in New Zealand. So ASB can take three days to talk to ANZ and stuff like that. And then after that time, we deposit the money um, into your scheduled account on the day that you've scheduled to take your money so that there's no surprises. That's really great. Awesome. Um, next question we've got is how do we get parents to sign up and how can I convince parents to start using direct debit and do we have any informational material to hand out? So yeah, great question again. We um, Signing parents up to direct debit through InfoCare is so easy. Um, once you have integrated with the platform, uh, it's simply going into the child's account and saying, yeah, I want to sign them up to EasyPay with a tick box. And you can then enter the parents' uh, details right there. And then if you have your paper enrollment form and you're wanting to do that with them, otherwise it's a click of a button to say email the um, bill payer. An email will go to the parent and it will have a hyperlink for them to click on and then they can enter either their bank or um, credit card details. So it, to sign them up is simply yeah, entering it there with them or flicking off an email for them to do it at home. Um, convincing parents to sign up to direct debit. Well, um, really that's just a case of direct debit versus um, all of the other payment methods. Every other payment method is very manual for the family. So there's a lot relying on them. Um, this is hard for them and you as center owners. Um, if you're doing a direct debit, it's a one-time sign up and, and everything is in your control. So if there are changes and things like that, it's all under your control. You're able to do that and know that your payments are gonna be coming through and the parents don't have to worry about making any amendments. 
Um, in terms of informational material, we absolutely do have that. So we work with easy pay to make bespoke um, information for you to give out, as well as um, obviously when it is an info care, it's coming with your branding when you are emailing those parents. Do you have anything else to add there, Lauren? Um, I would just add that it it's a push rather than a pull. So you are in control with direct debit. It's the centre controlling when and how. Whereas with automatic payments, which is, I'm guessing, in New Zealand, 99% of centres are set up. If a parent stops it for any reason, if they change amounts regularly, they don't tend to catch up. So you might have these small charges in your account that just keep going and occurring and stuff like that. Whereas direct debit, we look at the invoice and we take that amount and you control it rather than the parent having the control. Perfect. Um, one of our next questions, what can I do if a payment fails? Do I have to chase up payments? And if I do, can I see a list of failed payments? Uh, Lauren, you might want to answer half of that and I can help with the rest. Sure. So. Easy pay, we really, we really, really help with failed payments. We want you to know and we, we want the parent to know and we work together to get them sorted. So when you do see a failed payment or actually when a payment fails, the minute that it fails, Easy Pay sends that parent notification to say, oops, something's happened, your money hasn't gone through today. And we give the parent options to pay now, to sort out the invoice, to change their payment details. So maybe if they had bank, but there's no money in their bank account, but their credit card's fine this week, then they can on the fly change it to a credit card payment and the payment will go through. We also let the centre know and it comes back through as a failed, and not only that it's failed, but why it's failed. So within InfoCare, you will see if it's insufficient funds. And so that opens the conversation up to the parent, with the parent to say, look, I can see, you know, we're, we're often seeing an insufficient funds, let's discuss it. Or it could just be the bank accounts changed or the authority has been removed and stuff like that. So it actually helps with the conversation with the parent um, to guide them into fixing it and are getting the arrears gone. Perfect. Um, and in terms of can you see a list of failed payments? Yeah, absolutely you can. Um, in InfoCare, it's under your uh, transaction listings. Um, here it's more about um, you can see where they haven't paid uh, and then you can go through to that child's account and look into the reasons why. Um, EasyPay also have a settlement report that you get, so you'll be able to look into that a little bit deeper. Um, this will show you as well when they have failed previously and have now paid. So you're able to really hone into those answers. Um, really great questions. Um, is there a okay. I will, sorry, I will also add that um, reporting comes on settlement from EasyPay and it will um, explain the failed payments. Perfect. Um, it, another question is, is there a preferred payment method um, I should be asking for and what is the best payment method to use to improve collection rates? Lauren, I think that would probably be best for you. Yes, um, in the payments industry, we see lots of different types of payments. Um, to start off with the parent, I would leave it up to them. Um, the charges that change with bank and credit card, um, you may on, cho choose to on charge the credit card payments. And the parents are aware of that. We all live in a day where our Netflix account and our telecom or Spark account comes off that. Um, and so I would leave it solely up to the parent to choose between bank and credit card. We do find we can have better success on credit card, but we also find that there's a complexity that's been added into the payments industry given debit cards. So debit cards have a lot of rules around them. It's not simply, okay, I have this much limit and the bank might let me go over. Debit cards is I have to have money in the bank account, even if it is a visa, um, that I might have set limits to my debit card. So I might have said, okay, nothing over this much or after three transactions, don't take any more. So we've added, the industry has added this complexity into our industry, which is great. But to improve collection rates, credit card is always good. Um, not debit card, credit card. And then bank is a safe, a safe bet as well. Great answer there, Lauren. 
Um, I'd also like to add quickly, if you are using credit card as an option, if your credit card has associated points, um, it's a really great way for you to be able to gather those points if you do use that payment method, um, which can be a real perk for your parents as well. Um, Kind of along the same lines, there's another one that says, um, when should I bill parents? So is there a better time of day, uh, sorry, better day of the week um, or time to bill those parents? I think that's a me question too. Um, and we have, we bill in nine countries and we have hundreds of thousands of merchants and we do find that later in the week is better to bill. People don't tend to have money in their bank accounts on Monday, especially if they're paid weekly, um, they might live paycheck to paycheck and after the weekend, they may have not be any funds there. And people tend to pay their employees at the end of the week. So on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So they do, if you move your payments to the end of the week, they do improve the collection rates. So it's just a insurity that there's bank money in the bank account. Fabulous. And the next question kind of touches on something that you answered earlier, um, Lauren, and it says, when do I get paid? Yes, so within the system, when you sign up with Easy Pay through InfoCare, you set your settlement date. So you can set it of any day of the week um, when you get paid. The minimum we can have a turnaround of payment is three days. And as I explained, that is due to the bank's um, clearing accounts. So it has to clear in the, per in the customer's bank account and then over to ours, and then we distribute the funds out. Awesome. Um, the next question, Lauren, I think this is another good one for you. What will this cost my business and what about the parents? Yes, so that is very customizable. It is up to you as a centre owner. Um, so you may charge, choose to on charge our fees to the parents and then that makes it cost effective and cost zero to your centre because all the charges have been on charge. You can choose to absorb the fees. Um, or you could choose to do a mixture of both. So you may choose to absorb the bank fee, but then the credit card fee, because it's always a percentage due to working with schemes um, and parents know about these surcharges and percentages. It's not a surcharge because that would be mean we're adding money to it. Um, but you are always welcome to charge the parent just the credit card and not the bank and vice versa. So it really depends to the centre owner on how they set it up at the beginning. Awesome. Next question. Do parents get a reminder before payment is due? And how about after a payment is missed? So um, I can answer that question in terms of before a payment is due. So if you're doing your invoicing um, in InfoCare, uh, which is where this is obviously setting up to, your invoices that you send out as a statement can go to the parent and that will say that you are paying via direct debit. So that just kind of reminds them that you can expect your payment to come out um, soon. So what you might often do is invoice one day and a couple of days later have your run day for easy pay. And so the parent will get the reminder, hey, this is, this is your invoice that you're going to get charged and it will remind them that they're going through via direct debit. Um, and in terms of if a payment is missed, um, as Lauren's already said, yes, they do get notification via EasyPay. It is an email that gives them the option to retry that payment as well. Um, so that's just a little link where they can, again, enter either a different um, payment detail or they can try again. Um, when they do enter a different payment detail, they have the option as well to make that the permanent change or if it's just a one-off. Um, really great question. Um, so I hope that answers that. The next one that I can see here is, can I see an overview of all incoming payments, payments processing and missed payments? So again, yes, you've got your reports coming from EasyPay on your settlement, as well as reports that you can see in InfoCare, which reflect that um, as soon as it is active within EasyPay. Um, so whilst EasyPay are processing payments, you'll see within InfoCare that it's processing. Um, these are reports that we're looking at developing further, um, both in EasyPay and with InfoCare. But these are there and we're happy to talk you through this as well when you sign up. So Lauren and I um, can do that on a Zoom call or in person, depending on circumstances. Um, obviously with COVID rearing its head again, that does play a big part. Um, but we're happy to talk you through this and explain these reports so that you're comfortable with them. Great questions. 
Um, another one's just come through. I already collect payments with FPOS. Why would I offer or switch to direct debit? Lauren, are you able to tackle that one? I certainly am. And I think it leads back to my um, answer before about how the parent's still in control. So although they're in the centre with their FPOS card and they're paying, it, you're still relying on them to come in and make the payment. FPOS machines also still have charges, fees, um, a monthly rental for the machine itself here in New Zealand. And so with, with EasyPay, you could actually remove the FPOS machine because they've clearly got a credit card or a bank account. And so you could say, we'll sign up here and then it's automatically done and you don't need to come into the centre and use the FPOS machine, which in today's day and age is great for contactless transactions. Fabulous. <laughs> and you don't want anyone touching an FPOS machine. <laughs> And the last question that we've had pre-submitted says, what can I do if a parent is having issues making a payment? So the first thing here is just making sure that they're on the correct payment, that they've got all the correct details, that they haven't accidentally um, you know, missed off a suffix number or something like that. Um, and then another way is just um, going through those reports, getting really familiar with them. If the parent is constantly coming up with authority removed. It's it's to do with their bank. It, they need to have a conversation to make sure that that's going through. If it's saying that there's insufficient funds, it might be having that conversation with them of, hey, we've noticed that there's been a few um, insufficient funds. And like Lauren's already said earlier today, um, if you're doing this at the start of the week, potentially it's just before they get paid. And maybe you need to look at doing that. In InfoCare, this is made really simple for you. So you're able to choose whether they um, are invoiced the entire amount of their invoice or if potentially you need to set a limit. So this might be um, if you've got a parent whose weekly fees are a little too much for them at the moment. And let's just say they're getting charged $150 a week for their childcare, but re in reality, they can only afford $100 a week. You can easily make that change. So yes, their debt will be acc um, accruing, but you would also be having less debt than if they weren't to be on this scheme with you. Um, the other way of handling it as well is when you go on to direct debit for the first time, you may find that you've got parents who are in debt and you don't necessarily want that first transaction to be everything. And so you might put a limit so that you're having the weekly fee plus a little bit of their debt so that you can bring that down. Um, and it just becomes really flexible with you. And again, like we keep saying, it's in your control. So you're able to have those conversations with the families and you're able to make that impact for them. Um, so that's a great question. We've just had another question come in. Um, how secure is my payment, uh, parents' payment data? That's a great question. Lauren, I think that one's really good for you. Yes, so at EasyPay, we stand by being completely and utterly PCI compliant. And we do that so that you as centre owners, you have to be aware of it, but we take the onus off you and we are PCI compliant. So we work with the banks, we work with the schemes, and our information is a vault. So it's a locked vault. No one else, InfoCare doesn't hold the information. Um, it is all solely hold at EasyPay within our, our vault at the end of the day. We also have um, links into MasterCard and MasterCard and Visa are working strongly to move to another level of authentication, which is called um, scheme tokenization. So the banks, the end acquirer won't need to hold the information anymore the actual scheme will hold that data and it actually makes a lot better use of the cards so that as soon as one's stolen, they know if a card expires, it doesn't matter because they're within the scheme and the scheme knows this card is still okay. So we're allowed to use it. So we are PCI compliant, DASS, um, all these um, acronyms that mean nothing to anybody else other than me in the payments industry and I could talk about them for hours. So you rest assured that your parents' payments are secure. Fabulous, that's awesome. And uh, we've just had another question. What actually are the fees? So, um, yeah, great question. It, it, it's um, easily found on our InfoCare EasyPay link. Um, if you go to www.easypay.com forward slash InfoCare, there will be some schemes down there. But Lauren, if there's anything you wanna to touch on in terms of the fees? 
Yes, so as I mentioned before, the fees are completely customizable by yourselves as centre owners. Um, so we do, we, we keep the fees to four fees. Um, in the market, you'll see monthly fees and administration fees and data fees and stuff like that. We don't have any of those. We have transaction fees, which are a bank one and a credit card one. We have a one-off load fee. So as a new parent signs up, there's a load fee for that charge. And we have a failed payment fee. So to deter people from failing, there is a fee that's associated to it. And as mentioned before, each one is customizable. So you may choose to um, on charge all of them and make the fees free for the center, or you may choose to on charge two or three and vice versa. So it's completely and utterly up to you. Awesome. I think that's pretty much all the questions that we've had come through for today. Lauren, if you're okay, we'll just hang around for a few more minutes in case any last minute questions come up. But I'd just like to say thank you everybody for your time. It was lovely that you have signed up for this webinar. Um, keep your eye out for more webinars on our website with InfoCare. Um, we are looking at adapting that for some live training as well. Um, so if any other additional questions after this webinar, I'm happy to answer them at any time.